Okay, this is going to be the 20th main at Gettysburg, and this is part one. Uh, I am standing here on Brinkerhoff Ridge uh, in the outskirts of Gettysburg, Pennsylvania. Now, on June the 28th, G General George Sykes took command of the 5th Corps, of which the 20th Maine belonged, as George Gordon Meade was placed in command of the Army of the Potomac. Around June 30th, they reached Union Mills, Maryland. From there, they marched uh, to Hanover, Pennsylvania, along the Hanover-Westminster Road. And then from there, they made their way into McSherry's Town, Bonatown, and then on up this road in the, the direction the camera is facing toward Gettysburg. When they arrived right here on the outskirts of Gettysburg, um, here in front of us is the Henry Brinkerhoff Farm. And I actually did a video on the Henry Brinkerhoff Farm, uh, which you'll want to go back and watch to get some more information about the farm uh, and when it was built. Now, when they arrived here at the Henry Brinkerhoff Farm, the battle had already begun on the first day northwest of town, and it then shifted toward the southern end of the battlefield uh, in that direction. So it was here around uh, this farmstead that the 5th Corps, which the 20th Maine belonged to, had a change in direction in their march. Now, not many people uh, know the exact route of march of the 20th Maine once they reach Gettysburg. Uh, this road actually, if you take it straight, will go right into the center of town near the square. And we all know that the 20th Maine on July 2nd fought on the southern end of the battlefield on Little Round Top, which is in that direction. So some point between reaching the Henry Brinkerhoff farm uh, and fighting on Little Round Top, they had to make and find a route to the south. Um, that route is actually just past this farmstead. Today, the road is called Montclair Road. It's this road here to the left. And that was the road that the Union 5th Corps made a left here uh, and headed to proceed southbound uh, toward the round tops and we'll pick that up in our next video. And our first video we shot from the Henry Brinkerhoff farm which was just beyond these trees and I talked about turning to a road to the left. That road today is called Montclair Road. Now when the 5th Corps along with the 20th Maine uh, turned onto that road they proceeded in this direction. Now the 20th Maine uh, were members of the 5th Corps 3rd Brigade and the 1st Division under uh, General Barnes. That would be General James Barnes. Um, and this house here that's in front of us is the John Deerdorf house. And though I won't go into great detail on the, the farmhouse now, I did do another video which I'll post uh, as a part B along with this video series. Uh, and in that video series, I did talk about some Union 5th Corps uh, sharpshooting with some Confederates in the Deerdorf barn. But the 20th Maine passed by the Deerdorf farm on this road, which today is called Montclair Road. Now, one of the things about this particular road and site today, this road actually used to lead around the barn and then head uh, southbound. And, of course, uh, that was destroyed in the 1960s when Interstate 15 was put in, which is just behind the house here. Um, when that interstate was uh, put in, the, the original Civil War era road that the troops uh, marched on was taken out. Uh, and so the, 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 the route trace is gone today. Uh, you have to go back and look at some old maps to find the old trace of the road and where it existed. So we will pick up the other part of this road in our next video. This has been the 20th Main at Gettysburg, part two. We're following uh, today the old road in which the 20th Main used to get to the southern end of town. Today that road is partially called Montclair Road. <clears throat> and then up the road here, it turns into Mount Joy Road before coming to a dead end. 
And this road would have been the road that the 5th Corps, along with the 20th Maine, uh, marched along to get to the southern end of the battlefield uh, in the evening of July 1st into July 2nd of 1863. Um, of course, this road, the old trace of the road, was destroyed in the 1960s when Interstate 15 was expanded to four lanes and cut out most of the original roads uh, that that lied in between the uh, eastern and the western side. Now here where the sign says no outlet is the is, this is Mount Joy Road now that we're on and this comes to a dead end and when we get to the dead end uh, I'll show you where the road used to cross and that would be right here it bent just beyond these trees and crossed across the street there is a today a um, Kingdom Hall of Jehovah Witnesses Church parking lot and that's where the road ended up taking up we're gonna take up on our next video over there and show you the remaining march and I'm in the parking lot today of the Kingdom Hall in Gettysburg here in front of me is Highway Route 15 and just beyond the highway is where we just came in our last video at Mount Joy Road. The trees that we were looking at at the end of that video, this is them. Uh, originally the road trace came across the street here and we're going to follow it. And this is the route of March of the 5th Corps uh, which, in which the 20th Maine belonged to. Um, the roadbed once came right through what is today this church property and then continued south along which today is Highland Avenue Road and I do want to mention that another uh, monument that is not really visited too well is right here to the uh, 16th Pennsylvania Cavalry which fought on Brinkerhoff Ridge and also took a role in the Battle of Wolf's Hill now, as we follow this road here, um, Highland Avenue Road, southbound, the 20th Maine marching along with the 5th Corps marched down this road until they arrived at the Baltimore Pike. Now, when they got at the Baltimore Pike, they then turned to the right and proceeded uh, northbound along the Baltimore Pike until they got to the Granite Station uh, Schoolhouse Road. And we're gonna go ahead and follow that route here in the car uh, for time reasons. Now, one, a few things that I will point out along the way is uh, as we bend around these sharp bends, the reason this road bent so much at the time was because to my right is Wolf's Hill and troops had to find a way to get around uh, Wolf's Hill. Even though the battle was uh, being fought on July 2nd around the Round Top area. Another thing I wanted to point up, around here at another bend, just up here on our left, is a witness tree that's well over 200 years old. I spoke uh, to the owners of the property today uh, that operate a horse farm there. And that tree is directly here in front of us. You can see it here. Uh, this would have been a tree that the 5th Corps marched by along with the 20th Maine uh, on their way to the fight at Gettysburg. So for those of you that like the witness trees, there's a witness tree in Gettysburg that has no type of marker, but um, its age has definitely been determined by the locals who lived on the farm. And the person who lives on that and operates that farm to that farm has been in their family since the American Civil War. Today this, this route uh, actually leads, as it did back then, to the Baltimore Pike. Again, Wolf's Hill being to our right hand side in this direction over here. Now at this time, the battle had already been taken place uh, and of course the blunder of uh, General Dan Sickles on day two moving his troops caused a lot of uh, havoc and commotion in the placement of the federal troops and we'll talk about that more in detail as we trace out the route here.
and just up here around the bend would be the Baltimore Pike. Once the troops uh, arrived at the Baltimore Pike, uh, they were then they then turned right and proceeded down toward Rock Creek um, in the McAllister's Mill area, and it was there at McAllister's uh, Mill area where their direction changed once again. And we will uh, pick that up in part five. This has been the 20th Maine at Gettysburg, part four. And we just uh, got onto the Baltimore Pike and headed northbound. We made a right. And this is the route march of the 5th Corps and the 20th Maine here at Gettysburg. Um, the Baltimore Pike was always in control of the Federal Army and it was one of the key routes of supply uh, from Westminster into the town of Gettysburg. Um, and this was a very uh, important road that led into Gettysburg as we looked at earlier in a video on Wolf's Hill. Now this house, the stone house on the right is the G. Fleming Hoke house which was actually a toll house uh, the creek that we're about to cross is Rock Creek and Rock Creek plays an important role as well in the Battle of Gettysburg now once the 20th Maine uh, got into this area here McAllister's Mill being just to our right they then again changed direction and made a left just up here at the Granite Schoolhouse Road, and we're going to be doing that now. And directly in front of us is Powers Hill. And this is the area of Powers Hill that the 20th Maine and the 5th Corps most likely spent the evening of July 1st, 1863 in, uh, and then waking up on the morning of July 2nd proceeding to the battlefield from this area. This has been the 20th Maine at Gettysburg, part five. And I'm standing here at the Granite Schoolhouse Road. Um, our last video we shot, we turned off of the McAllister's Mill area and then marching in this direction, the 5th Corps with the 20th Maine probably spent the night in the area of Powers Hill, which is here in the distance. Uh, this is also named the Granite Schoolhouse Road because there was at one time a granite schoolhouse that sat here along the road. Today there's a marker here um, for the 1st Brigade of Horse Artillery, Battery B and L, the 2nd U.S. Artillery that was commanded by Lieutenant Edward Heaton. Um, and right across the street from this monument, um, just beyond the stone wall here you see, on the, on the bottom is the actual foundation of the original uh, granite schoolhouse. There are still some of the roads, um, or, or rather rocks rather, that were from that schoolhouse that still exist on the ground, the foundation rocks. Um, that building was torn down and some of those uh, rocks were actually used to make the foundation of the Rosensteel Visitor Center, uh, which was here in Gettysburg and just till a few years ago. So that historic Civil War building, some of the stones from that historic uh, building were actually used to build the old visitor center that used to sit down on the Tawny Town Road, uh, which is in front of us. Well, as the 20th Maine proceeded to march, they marched in this direction that we're facing now uh, until they got to the Tawny Town Road. And at this time, in the morning of July 2nd, a lot of things had begun to happen. Union and Confederates had begun to set their battle plans and their lines. Uh, on the Confederate side, General Lee planned an early morning attack, but that attack was delayed by General Longstreet as he began to countermarch his troops for hours on end, delaying the attack. The Union had also set a, a strong fishhook position up um, after July 1st, they began to t form their battle line in the shape of a fish hook, which would extend from uh, Culp's Hill just in this direction all the way around to the southern end of the battlefield, ending at the round tops. And one of the men that was placed in a position that he didn't like was Major General Dan Sickles of the Third Corps. 
And on the morning of July 2nd, he decided that the ground that he was placed in uh, wasn't good for him. And he decided on his own, uh, disobeying uh, George Gordon Meade's command, and he moved his Third Corps troops out in, the, in a salient in the peach orchard. And his line stretched all the way from Devil's Den over to the peach orchard and around. Um, and in doing that, he opened up a huge hole in that Union fish hook. And this is where uh, the 20th Maine will take their place in history amongst the battle because it was these arriving troops of the 5th Corps as well as many other corps that had to be strategically placed at the last moment in a position that they probably weren't intended to fight on originally here at Gettysburg. This has been the 20th Maine at Gettysburg, their arrival, part six on Gettysburg Battlefield Facebook. At Gettysburg, part seven here on Gettysburg Battlefield Facebook. And I'm coming out at the Granite School House Road onto the Tawny Town Road. Uh, and it was just across these fields right here that the 20th Maine crossed on July 2nd, 1863 in the, in the morning and made their way toward the uh, George Weigert Farm. Uh, they would cross right across these fields over here to the George Weigert Farm and they would walk along the George Weigert Farm Lane and in our next video we're going to take up their route of march there. This has been the 20th Maine at Gettysburg Part 7. Okay this is going to be the 20th Maine at Gettysburg Part 8. And we just left off in part seven, where they had crossed off the Tawny Town Road, right through the open field there, and they made their way to the George Weikert Farm, which is the stone house here on the left. And the 20th Maine, along with the Vincent's uh, troops, began to march on the Weikert Farm Lane, the George Weikert Farm Lane. Now the George Weikert farm lane would go right by the George Weikert farm here and head south toward the John T. Weikert farm. And in our next part, we'll pick up over at that farm lane. And that's where um, Joshua Chamberlain, uh, marching in the rear of Vincent's, seen Strong Vincent approached by a captain and given specific orders to proceed to Little Round Top. Now a little bit about George Weikert here. He owned this farm here. Um, he was born in 1807 in Adams County. Um, he was white, he was a farmer, and he lived with his wife here at this farm, Anne, who was born in 1808. Um, they had a few children, Hannah, born in 1846, Valentine, born in 1844, and Emmanuel, born in 1850, and their youngest was uh, Louise, born in 1851. And they own this very beautiful farm here, which still sits here today, and uh, this was their farm lane. And this is the lane that uh, Colonel Joshua Lawrence Chamberlain, the 20th Maine, uh, marched on after they got off of the uh, Tawny Town Road area. Now it is very likely that just in that field beyond here was where they were met um, with the soldiers from the other main regiment who had been disbanded. And you see a little bit of that played out in the movie Gettysburg. These were soldiers that were being considered uh, mutineers. They had signed up to fight but not with the 20th Maine. So they felt that they could go home. Um, they were held under guard, and Joshua Lawrence Chamberlain, uh, maybe from just being a professor, was able to uh, speak with them and convince them that they were needed. And most of those men uh, fought with the 20th Maine, or would fight with the 20th Maine, rather, on Little Round Top, which we'll see in our upcoming videos. Um, and out of the 300 and 58 men that fought with the 20th Maine on Little Round Top, those extra men uh, from the 2nd Maine, had they not decided, because of Joshua Lawrence Chamberlain, to fight with them, the 20th Maine 
may not have been able to hold the ground at all hazards as requested by Colonel Strong Vincent. So there are some very unique stories as we look at this fight, this upcoming fight on Little Round Top, and I want to keep the mutineer soldiers in mind. Uh, had it not been for their extra numbers, uh, what you see in the upcoming videos may not have happened. Also, the fact that Joshua uh, Lawrence Chamberlain would send one company of men, Company B, uh, Captain Walter Morrill, uh, into a different position where he would actually be preserving his uh, ammunition as the 20th Maine was expending it. But this has been the 20th Maine at Gettysburg uh, marching along the George Weikert farm lane. And we're here at the John T. Weikert farm. In part eight, we actually came from this area back at the George Weikert farm lane. And as they marched on the George Weikert farm lane, they crossed over into John T. Weikert's farm and this farm lane that we're on here. And they proceeded in this direction. Now a little bit about John T. Weicker. He was born in 1838 and he was a uh, carpenter. And he was also a member of Company B of the 138th Pennsylvania Volunteers. <clears throat> and this was his farm here in 1863. Uh, this is still the original farm lane that the 20th Maine marched with. Now they were in Vincent's Brigade and as they marched here on this uh, farm lane. They were in the marching order of the 44th New York, followed by the 16th Michigan, followed by the 83rd Pennsylvania, and then finally the 20th Maine. So the 20th Maine was in the rear of the marching line. As they headed toward the wheat field, uh, leading James Barnes' division, Brigade uh, was waiting for their orders when a captain from General George Sykes' staff rode to him. Now, Colonel Strong Vincent uh, rode out toward this captain, and he said to him, um, and Oliver W. Norton, who was Vincent's brigade color bearer, uh, rode with him and accounted the event. Vincent said, Captain, what are your orders? And the captain stated, where is General Barnes? Vincent ignored his question and said, what are your orders? Give me your orders. And the captain of General Sykes replied, General Sykes directed me to tell General Barnes to send one of his brigades to occupy that hill yonder. And at that time, he actually, in this area, pointed to the hill yonder over here being Little Round Top. Now, Vincent replied to him, I will take the responsibility of taking my brigade there. He then ordered Colonel Rice, who was a regimental uh, brigade commander, to move rapidly toward that hill yonder, which is over there. So it was from this point here on the Weikert farm lane that uh, history would be changed forever. As General Strong Vincent, standing in the place of General Barnes, uh, took the responsibility on his own without orders to move to the hill yonder over here which is Little Round Top. And it was from that position that Vincent would begin to deploy uh, his brigade in their positions uh, on the Round Top. This has been the 20th Maine at Gettysburg Part 9. After moving from the John T. Weikert farm lane by Strong Vincent, they were moved into this area. And Strong Vincent, at that time, um, was placed here, or, or placed rather, uh, Joshua Lawrence Chamberlain and the 20th Maine here. At the same time, uh, Confederate General Evander Law took positions on Hauk, Hauk's Ridge, which they had just overrun. But a part of his brigade detached and moved up over Big Round Top into this area here. They were led by uh, Colonel William Calvin Oates, the 15th Alabama, and their orders were to attack and turn the far left of the Union Army. And that far left was Colonel Joshua Lawrence Chamberlain and the 20th Maine, who had just been placed in this area 
uh, just moments before. In fact, Vincent, as he rode away, stated that this battle would either bring him a star or it would end his career as a soldier. And of course, as Vincent is mortally wounded on Little Round Top on July 2nd, 1863, and taken to a nearby farm where he would pass away a few days later, he was brevetted Brigadier General by George Gordon Meade, so the battle would bring him a star. It also ended his military career. Now, the 20th Maine was placed in line right here in this area where I'm standing now. In fact, to me, to the left, is their left flank marker. And over here, to the right, just over the pump there, is their right flank marker. And they were here in this position. Um, they had built some earthworks up, and they were in this position when they were attacked by a Vander Laws Brigade, the 15th Alabama, uh, direct attack toward their front. And this was a very desperate attack for both sides. One, it was ground that Ch Chamberlain was told to uh, hold at all hazards, whether he had a certain amount of men or a certain amount of ammunition or support. He was to hold this ground at all hazards or all costs. Uh, for Law and the 15th Alabama, they had a, a very long march of about 20 miles uh, just to get here to Gettysburg uh, that day. And they were exhausted. They were out of water, um, exhausted. And uh, by the time this attack happened, uh, they were pretty much at their, at their worst. Um, and they were in their worst shape. They were, they were very worn down, dehydrated. So the action that happens here, and, and them being commanded to, t to turn the, the, the left flank, was a very difficult task. Also, uh, Chamberlain had just been placed here. He really didn't have a lot of time to organize. As the attack began of Law's Brigade and these Alabama troops just in front of us here, uh, of course, they were at the disadvantage of having to come uphill. And a wave after wave after wave of attack uh, would take its toll on both sides as far as men and as far as ammunition. And every time that the attack happened, uh, what, what uh, Law's Brigade and the Alabamans would do is they would simply move a little bit further to their right or to the left of the Federal Army here at the 20th May. And then they would attack up the slopes again. And be driven back and then they're, they're, they would move to their right further and then attack and then be driven back and, and, and as this went on they continued to attack and move further to the right extending and stretching the line of the 20th Main up here to the point where they were about to break. Also uh, the problem was, was that the ammunition on both ends had begun to run out. Uh, in a desperate uh, <clears throat> attempt to save and hold the ground at all cost, as uh, was asked of by Strong Vincent, Chamberlain uh, decided one last measure he would do would be to fix bayonets uh, and, and move forward down the hill with the bayonets. Now, during the action, just before uh, the attack, um, Chamberlain had sent out Captain Morrill, Captain Walter Morrill of Company B in this direction over here. And during these attacks, where it was attack, retreat, attack, retreat, he had not heard or seen from Morrill. He had actually thought that Morrill had been captured or killed uh, along with his company. Um, so here at this desperate time, the 20th Maine fixes bayonets and they decide that what they're going to do is they're going to go downhill on a bayonet charge and as they move they would sw swing and sweep like a door pushing the confederate army pretty much back to the area that it started on and we're going to take over that action in our next video this has been the 20th Maine at gettysburg part 10 and uh, as chamberlain launched his bayonet charge down the hill on the slope of Little Round Top, which is in front of us. They charged into this area, taking many prisoners of the 15th Alabama. And one of the secrets of the battlefield is this little outcropping of boulders right here. These boulders were actually used by about seven men from the 15th Alabama 
uh, on the afternoon and early evening of July 2nd, 1863, as they were dueling with the uh, 20th Marine on the round top. They were able to hide behind these boulders and take cover. Uh, and using the of the men who was able to escape the bayonet charge and survive the war actually wrote a report and mentioned those boulders in his report. That's how we know that story. Now, as the 20th Maine began charging with bayonets downhill in this direction, uh, taking prisoners uh, nearly out of ammunition themselves, they didn't realize uh, what was about to happen. And that's another one of the true secrets of the battle here on the round map. Um, they pursued the Confederate in this direction over here. And today, uh, if you do walk out in this area, you have to be very careful because it's really overgrown. There's a lot of fallen trees and logs and whatnot. <laughs> and, uh, but they pursued them into this area. And these retreating Confederate troops had something happen to them that caught them completely uh, by surprise. They're being pushed back, swinging like a door in this direction. And as I mentioned in an earlier video, at the outset of the battle, um, Chamberlain had sent Company B under the command of Captain Walter Morrill uh, in this direction. Now Morrill's Company B was actually armed uh, with a, a carbine rifle, um, that, uh, a repeating style rifle. And as these troops were being chased back here, Captain Morrill and Company B simply rose up from a stone wall that you see here in front of us and fired into the nearly the front of the retreating Confederates. As you walk out here today to this area, you'll actually see the marker that depicts this action. Not many people that know the story of the 20th Maine ever get to see or visit this area. And it says, position of Company B, 20th Maine, volunteers. Captain Water, Walter G. Morrill detached the skirmishers attacking the enemy's right flank on the afternoon of July 2nd, 1863. So again, this is the stone wall that Captain Walter Morrill and Company D hid behind during the battle on Little Round Top, and then just at the right time, rose up and fired into the backs of Confederates. Now at this point, as the Confederates began retreating the area. They're being fired on from this direction. They're being fired on from this direction and now we're on the front. They're being fired on by Morrill and his Company B volunteers. And at this point, they thought that they were surrounded, if not just nearly surrounded. And this is where many of them gave up the fight right here in this area. This has been the 20th Main at Gettysburg and Secrets of the Battlefield. 20th Main at Gettysburg, Part 11. Okay, this is going to be the 20th Main, Part 12. And as we take a look at the 20th Main's monument here on uh, Little Round Top, I want to talk about this little paved road here. This is also going to be secret to the battlefield, Chamberlain Avenue. This little road that we're walking on was just paved last year. Um, in two thir 2013, for the 150th anniversary of the Battle of Gettysburg. Um, after the war, as veterans groups uh, became very popular, and of course, Joshua Lawrence Chamberlain was one of the oldest survivors in high command in the American Civil War. Here at Gettysburg, he was the hero. He was a savior of Little Round Top. And as foot traffic gave way to horse-drawn carriage and then the modern vehicles in the early 1900s, it was decided that a road called Chamberlain Avenue would be put in around the area where the 20th Main fought here at Little Round Top. And there was a stone roadbed put right along the side here 
for Chamberlain Avenue. And the original intention was actually to have a statue of Colonel Joshua Lawrence Chamberlain placed along the avenue where visitors riding along the avenue could look and see it. Um, Joshua Lawrence Chamberlain was against that idea. He did not want a statue of himself here at Gettysburg, so it never happened. But the spot where that statue was supposed to be placed is right here. We call this the Chamberlain Rock, even though it really significantly doesn't have have any uh, significance to Chamberlain ever standing on it or actually fighting since they were doing most of the fighting over here. This was the rock that Chamberlain's statue was supposed to stand on. Uh, of course when <clears throat> you are Colonel Joshua Lawrence Chamberlain and at that point in his life after the war General Chamberlain and you're against it, uh, there's really no way of getting that measure passed. But today, uh, Chamberlain Avenue is still here. It's a little walking trail, and it pretty much circles the 20th Main's fighting position here on Little Round Top. This has been the 20th Main at Gettysburg, Part 12, and Secrets of the Battlefield, Chamberlain Avenue. Also, Secrets of the Battlefield, the Oaks Boulder, the Oats Boulder. In front of us is the 20th Main Monument, and the attack of the 15th Alabama came in this direction here, as we talked about a few parts ago in our video. And of course, there's the left flank mark of the 20th Main, the right flank mark in their line. Now, during the actions here on July 2nd, 1863, um, several members of the 15th Alabama were actually able to penetrate the 20th Main line. And one of those men was the brother of William Calvin Oates of the 15th Alabama. And this particular boulder that sits in front of us is actually called the Oates Boulder. And that is because it was here on this boulder on July 2nd, 1863, that William Calvin Oates remembered his brother being mortally wounded. And a lot of times when you come here to Gettysburg, you'll see a Confederate flag uh, placed next to this boulder um, because most people that do know the story recognize that as the Oates boulder. Also, um, in our last part, we talked about Chamberlain Avenue and the roadbed that was that was uh, used to build the the avenue. That what they did um, was actually they destroyed several boulders that looked like this one in the area to make the roadbed. One of the boulders they did destroy is actually just back here about 20 feet from the Oats boulder. Right here there's a big open hole in the ground. It was a boulder about the same size as the Oats boulder that was literally uh, drilled into pieces to make small stones for roadbed for Chamberlain Avenue in the early 1900s. And again, that's why even such things as rocks and boulders here at Gettysburg are very important. Because even though these are not living objects, a lot of these items were here during the Battle of Gettysburg and still are here today. Um, maybe the stone walls like this are reconstructed, earthworks, um, but the boulders such as the Oats boulder were never moved. A lot of the boulders around here were never moved and still stand here today as non-living witnesses to the Battle of Gettysburg. And lastly, uh, as a part of the 20th Main video series, I do want to take a look at the monument over here. Uh, it's one of the more visited monuments on the Gettysburg National Military Park, probably due to the popularity of the movie as well. But this monument uh, has the names of the officers and men of the 20th Maine who were killed or, di or died of their wounds in this action. And on the side it says 20th Maine, 3rd Brigade, 1st Division of the 5th Corps. And then it proceeds to have the men who were wounded or killed 
around the other side of the monument. This has been the 20th Main at Gettysburg, Part 13, and Secret to the Battlefield, the Oats Boulder, and the 20th Main Monument on Little Round Top. And on Part 13, as we looked at the monument and the Oats Boulder over where the 20th Main fought, on the afternoon of July 2nd, 1863, a lot of times, and probably mostly because of the movie Gettysburg, it is depicted that the 20th Maine left Little Round Top and headed right toward the Union Center of Pickett's Charge, where the battle happened, and there in the movie you see Joshua Chamberlain, his brother hugging, and talking about a, a soldier named Kilrain who never existed. Um, but... In actuality, what happened to the 20th Maine after the fight on Little Round Top is they proceeded up the hill from that direction over here where you see the stone wall on this monument. And this was their position on the evening of July 2nd, 1863. Here is the other least visited 20th Maine monument. It says the 20th Maine Regiment, 3rd Brigade, 1st Division, 5th Corps, Colonel Joshua Lawrence Chamberlain captured and held this position on the evening of July 2nd, pursuing the enemy from its front on the line marked by the monument below. The regiment lost in the battle 130 killed and wounded out of 358 engaged. This monument marks the extreme left of the Union line during the Battle of Gettysburg. That is right. This monument was drug all the way up to the top of Big Round Top, and monument was spelled monument. So this is one of the monuments on the Gettysburg National Military Park that has a grammatical error in it, <laughs> which I kind of think is funny. Um, again, it marks the extreme left of the Union line of the battle, which they held on July 3rd, 1863, from this point. This has concluded our series on the 20th Maine at Gettysburg, and I wanted to dedicate the series to two friends of mine, um, Tom Nickerson and Robin Hood. Um, both of these men um, arrived here from Maine earlier this year uh, who had friended this Facebook page of mine. And, you know, they took it to the extreme where we were more than just Facebook friends. We became true friends and spent a quality amount of time out here uh, on the Gettysburg battlefield while they were here in town and uh, it was always inspiring for someone from Maine who has a connection and has a love for the 20th Maine as these two men did to come here and actually be able to walk uh, in the footsteps and show them where these men from their home state were. Um, they're true friends of mine and always will be. We we're blood brothers forever, but probably because of the Gettysburg Battlefield Facebook page being created in the first place. So uh, this 20th Maine at Gettysburg video series is uh, for you, Tom, and for you, Robin. And uh, I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope all of our followers will also be inspired to always send in requests and comment. And then if you're visiting here in Gettysburg, you know, maybe for us to meet up and become friends uh, using social networks. This has been the 20th Maine at Gettysburg.